hello, hello, my lovely gang of Lynchaholics. Hope you're all having a really great week. Uh, we're going to start another song today. Yeah! <laughs> we're back onto Dokken today. And uh, from the album, back from the... 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 Back Back for the attack. <laughs> if I can say it correctly, damn it. <laughs> back for the attack. Uh, from the album Back for the Attack, uh, we're going to do the song Lost Behind the Wall. So we're going to do the rhythm part today. Uh, this was requested by a couple of people. Uh, just a you know wonderful song. Uh, the album is great. Um, it's just one of those albums where I I think there's a bad song on the album you know it's just everything's really cool the only song i never really got on with was sleepless nights it's on the list to do at some point i will do it <laughs> and i have you know played it before and stuff but that's the only song i didn't really kind of you know meld with properly because i was really into the hard rock stuff i wanted the you know the hard and heavy stuff give me the hard and heavy stuff <laughs> the happy go lucky kind of love songs don't mind them. you know but i wanted to hear George Rip <laughs> you know I wanted to hear him do the the heaviest stuff so you know my favorite songs were things like Kiss of Death and obviously Mr. Scary and Cry of the Gypsy and stuff like that um, but wonderful album um, I am using my um, I have been using this for the uh, last few Lynch Licks well, actually since I got this I haven't used the Randall since I got this it's just so cool that I can show you my amp, my 100 watt amp, <laughs> in my hand, <laughs> which is crazy. This is just such a beautiful, beautiful amp. It's the Blue Guitar Amp one, if you don't know already, um, designed by the amazing Thomas Bluke. Um, I used this on the video today again. Um, it's on the Classic channel. It's mind-blowing that I can actually just bring my 100 watt head um, down from the loft whenever I need to can hold it like this <laughs> it's pretty cool eh? it's a pretty cool party trick <laughs> have you seen my 100 watt app um, anyways uh, we're gonna do the playthrough up in the loft and then we'll be back down here and I shall show you exactly uh, how to play this or, or well how I'm playing the rhythm track anyways today I did something a little bit different with this I plugged in two cabs <laughs> I'm plugged into my Randall 212 on one side um, on my um, left side and on my right side I was plugged into my line 6 112 just wanted to see you know if it worked and it did and it sounded fantastic it sounded pretty big up there so I'm gonna stop talking I'm gonna take you up there and show you what uh, this all sounds like okay let's do it
So, Lost Behind the Wall. Great song. Pretty easy rhythm section. You know, there's not a whole lot going on. It's basically some open chords, power chords. Um, but I'm going to walk you through it. And I'll show you how I'm playing it and stuff. Um, so the song actually starts off with just drums and bass and then the guitar comes in and there's this uh, common kind of riff that goes uh, throughout the, the verse section um, and also repeats in the chorus as well. So um, it goes like this. I'm going to play it through first and then I'll break it down for you. Alright, so what I'm doing there is um, I'm starting off on the uh, E power chord, um, so the open low E string and the second fret of the A string and the D string. I'm just using a single finger to bar these off, uh, these two uh, second frets. So I'm going to strike that and then I'm going to go to G chord. So that's going to be the third fret of the E string and third fret of the B string. I'm not going to play the high E string um, and usually I don't pick down to there anyways so um, I'm not going to put a finger on there so I'm going to start from the E and then go to the G and then I'm going to play another E but this time I'm going to play it an octave above um, so what I'm going to do is play the second fret of the D string and the fourth fret of the G string um, so I'm going to play the E in this position Again, just the two strings, and then I'm going to go to D chord. So this is going to be the second fret of the uh, G string, third fret of the B string. So I'll play those two. And then I'm going to come back to the E power chord, the low E power chord. And that's going to form the basis of the, this rhythm part, which is so cool. <laughs> and it's so easy. Um, all right, so one more time. I'm going to add them all together. So it's going to be E, G, E one octave up, D, and then back to the low E. And this repeats, basically, this repeats a couple of times. Um, and then, um, basically, George picks it up and he plays this. So, just a slight variation on what we've already played. The power chords are going to stay the same, um, but before and after, I'm going to be uh, hitting the G chord and then going back to the E power chord and chugging. So just like this. And it's literally just going to be that between it. And So I'm hitting the G and then going back to the E and then um, I think I'm um, uh, muting the strings and uh, chugging four times. And then going back to the G, back to the E, chugging again. So while that's going on, there's also a little lead part that's going on, uh, which George is playing. And that kind of goes like this. <laughs> So again, really, really simple stuff. Um, playing the seventh fret of the A string, and then going to the fifth fret of the D string. Then I'm going to go to the fourth fret of the uh, G string, and then come back to the fifth fret of the A string. And to end, I'm going to come back to the seventh fret of the A string. I'm going to play it twice and put lots of vibrato on it. And that goes, that happens in the background. So I actually recorded that onto the backing track when I created it so that you could hear how it all kind of interacts together. So now we're on to the pre chorus, and the pre chorus goes like this. <laughs> So 
So what I'm doing is I'm um, coming to the G chord, uh, but in order to get here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing the zero and two on the E string, I'm going to put palm mute on there, and then do the G chord. And um, I'm chugging after that. So I'm doing three chugs. Um, along with it. So I'll do the G chord three chugs and then what I'm going to do is come to the second fret of the A string I'm just going to play this single note Now when you see me do the playthrough you'll see me just doing this and keeping my, my third finger on the um, third fret of the uh, B string. I'm not actually playing down to the B string I'm literally just picking the second fret of the A string um, and the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can get back to the G chord really quickly. So I'm going to do the G and then go to 2nd fret, come back to G, do the chugs again. Now I'm going to come back to the 2nd fret, but this time I'm going to come to the A power chord. So this is going to be the 2nd fret of the D and G strings, but just with a single finger, open A string as well. And then I'm going to do the B power chord. So this is going to be second fret of the A, fourth fret of the D and the G. So I'm just going to play it as a, um, a two. I think when I do the playthrough, I play it twice and then do some chugs. Um, and now the chugs that I'm going to do are going to be on the low E string to finish off. And this is going to take us into the chorus. So once I've done the um, B chord, Going to chug on the low E string, the open E string with a lot of palm muting going on, uh, three times. Chorus goes like this. So the chords you already know, um, it's exactly the same as I've shown you previously. Um, before I do the chords, I'm going to do this little um, uh, little section. So what I'm doing is the seventh fret of the D and the G strings, and I'm using my second and third fingers to uh, fret these notes. And um, the reason I do this is because I, I I find it easier to do vibrato on the strings on these two strings when I'm using these two fingers. And then I can use my first finger to actually uh, just place over the A string. So when I uh, do the vibrato, which I do upwards, I don't hear the A string kind of ringing out. So I'm gonna hit these, these twice and put vibrato on. Then I'm gonna come back to the low E string and um, chug on it three times. And then I'm gonna change my fingering here. So I'm gonna leave my um, second finger on the seventh, seventh fret of the uh, D string, but I'm gonna put my first finger on the sixth fret of the G. I'm gonna play this exactly the same. So I'm gonna uh, play it twice and put vibrato on. Now I'm gonna come back to uh, the chugging on the low E string. And after that, I'll do the chords. And then I'll repeat. Now, uh, after the second time and before I go into the, the second verse, um, I basically um, do the chords again. And I let that ring out. Uh, when I did the playthrough, when you saw the playthrough, um, during the second verse I did something slightly different. And um, there are two guitar parts which are going on um, during the second verse. Chords as usual. Which you know. But there's also this part which goes like this. And that's the only slight variation that takes place. So what I'm doing there is on the low E string, I'm doing zero, two, and then I'm arpeggiating um, the G chord. Um, so um, I'm gonna be playing the third fret of the E string, the second fret of the A string, and the open G string. So I'm gonna play um, so that everything is ringing out. I'm not gonna play the individual notes. I'm gonna leave them all open. So that's gonna be zero, two, on the E string and then the arpeggio. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm going to move this shape um, over to the fifth fret of the A string. So this time I'm going to play the fifth fret of the A, uh, the uh, fourth fret of the D, and the open G. And then I'm going to come back to the E power chord. And this is basically the substitute for playing the, the uh, this section. But it's obviously played over that section as well. Now on the record, George plays it with a pretty clean tone. Um, uh, I obviously just had the, the distorted tone going on. Um, and it's fine to do it that way as well. And that's it. That's the whole of that rhythm part. Um, I'm going to play it all through for you um, so that you can see how it all clips together. And then we'll head up to the loft and uh, I'll show you the playthrough through the backing track as well. So here we go with it. <laughs> That's all of the rhythm part. All right, let's head back up to the loft and I'll show you to the backing track. And with lots of volume and two cabs behind me, yay!
Isn't this a great sounding unit? It sounds so good. I can't believe, what I, had. I can't believe I'm holding it in my hands. It's just, you know, wonderful piece of technology. Um, I use the classic channel most of the time. Um, for you guys who, who have one of these, the uh, settings I have, classic channel, overdrive is on eight, master is on eight, um, master volume, this master volume, the overall volume is at two. <laughs> That's how loud it is. Um, I've got the bass on two, middle on five, treble on four, and the reverb is quite high, about 7.5. So, you know, if you guys have, and I have the boost on as well. Um, so if you guys have one of these, feel free to try out those settings. Just a lovely sounding unit. 100 watts, 100 watts in my hand, one hand. <laughs> and coupled with this guitar, this wonderful Tiger guitar, um, which has a Screaming Demon in the bridge. This Screaming Demon is modified. It has an Al Nico 8 magnet in there. Um, just gives me that back for the attack tone. You know, it has that wonderful old school martial tone. The classic amp on the amp one is, um, actually it's got a JCM 800 vibe, early 80s kind of, you know, um, JCM 800 type of thing going on. I can use the vintage channel, but it's a little bit, you know, it's very, Plexi like so I'd need a boost pedal or something to give it that kind of you know totally overdriven sound but anyways it gives me the back for the attack sound so there you go uh, the rhythm for lost behind the wall it's a pretty simple rhythm you know the it's power chords and stuff and some open chords and things but just you know the thing I really love about this song is that you can let the chords just ring out and over, you know just feed back and just do their thing rather than, you know, just play, 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 riff, riff, riff. So it's nice to actually hang back sometimes and just let the guitar do the work, you know, just strike a chord and let everything else, let, you know, the harmonics just ring out and feedback and everything go crazy and mental, <laughs> which is very cool. And next week we're going to be doing the solo for the song, so do tune in for that. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comments box below, or you can reach me at my websites, jpalmer.com or brightonguitarguru.co.uk, um, also on Facebook, Twitter and Google+. And, um, you know, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, so you can see all the cool stuff that I put up. And uh, if you have any requests, please do send them through. I'm, happy, I'm always happy to listen. <laughs> I've got a list for about a year, but I, I shall add uh, new re requests to that and get to them when I can. <laughs> All right, have a fantastic week, guys, and I shall see you next time. <laughs>